In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today, my beloved, we have the last Sunday, and tomorrow that we can still have non lentil food. We gave up meat last week, and now we have to give up everything else, all the dairy products, all the, uh, the fish, and the... Uh, no eggs and uh, of course all those things and then birds and what have you. Today we heard the gospel and the gospel the Lord said these things. He said that if you forgive your brothers then God the Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive your brothers God the Father was not going to forgive us. He's trying to tell us that we have to learn not to hold any grudges. It is of utmost importance that we do not hold any grudges. Why do we hold grudges in the first place? We hold grudges most of all, most of all because we consider that it was unfair treatment that we have received and that uh, they should treat us better than uh, they have treated us, whoever it may be. It may be your husband, it may be your wife, members of the family, neighbors, it doesn't matter. The point is we get offended. And why, where does it come from? Well, when we get offended, it's always a sign that we have not learned the humility yet. We have not learned how to live an Orthodox Christian way. Orthodox Christian persons cannot get offended. Father, are you serious? Yes, I am quite serious. We cannot get offended. Why? Well, nobody can hurt us because whatever is negative somebody trying to do with us, we in our heart immediately feel, well, we deserve it. We deserve it because we did something wrong before or maybe we're going to do it afterwards and the Lord is helping us to learn uh, to take things, a little punishment for the things that we have done, which wasn't so good. Can I tell myself or can you tell yourself that uh, we are all perfect and we have not did anything wrong? Well, if we ever come to that conclusion, we should feel very, very sorry for ourselves to know that we went totally wrong direction. Our Lord was approached, Jesus Christ was approached by a young man, uh, which he said to him, good teacher, Oh, no. He called him good, and the Lord says, what are you calling me good for? The only one good is God. And of course he was God, but he wanted to show to us, show, show us that humility. This is what we should always go after. My beloved, today is a chance for all of us to ask forgiveness of each other. And that's, that's the tradition that the church has um, put in. Today is Forgiveness Sunday, it's called also. And we ask forgiveness of everybody, everybody. I ask forgiveness of all of you for not having enough love for the Lord to be, of course, I'm not in the constant prayer that I should be for all of you. And uh, laziness, uh, these are the main things. And of course, uh, where it comes from, all comes from pride and not acknowledging those things that uh, I even uh, the preach. What I preach, I don't live uh, according to that. If I would be living the, uh, according to my preaching, uh, I would be in all probability uh, about uh, a hundred pounds less in weight, for instance, just right there. You might be loved, but don't hold it against me. Just try to forgive me and try to pray for me that the Lord will allow me or help me to start to not only to preach the right things, but also to live the right way. You might be loved. We all need more prayers. All of us don't pray enough. We lose sight of our Lord. And this is a very detrimental to us. And when we lose sight of our Lord, then it's so easy to go on our high horse and start to uh, look down even on people and, and or to start to get offended when people tell us something that goes against our grain and to get irritated and then finally even to have the passion of anger 
rivers, all those things come from the same place and the source and the beginning of it is all the beginning starts really from the vanity. It starts from vanity, goes into pride, and, uh, and then, uh, of course, we don't have the beginning of wisdom, which is fear of God, acknowledgement of His being with us. That oh, every, He is everywhere present and fill us all things, my beloved. Let's try to take it seriously. We have another chance. We have another chance uh, to work on ourselves for the great Lent is, is starting you know, tomorrow. And uh, we are, according to the church um, books, we shouldn't eat anything tomorrow. And, and if we are weak, and, uh, Tuesday we can start to have some uh, bread and water. And there is not, no cooking is allowed during this coming week, except for uh, the big holiday, which is going to be on uh, Friday. Friday we're having a pre-sanctified liturgy also, and then but it's also the 40 uh, martyrs is celebrated. And then it's allowed to have uh, a, a little cooked uh, 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 meal, but no oil is allowed. Well, Father, we, we were talking as if, you know, the, an old days, and like, that's like they used to have it. Yeah, that's right. Nobody ever changed these laws and rules. Of course, if you have medical problems and, and it's difficult for you to uh, do those things, ask your father to give you an absolution. He can do that. He can soften the the, uh, the Lent for you. But the main thing is let's humbly accept. Let's try to accept those things that the Lord is teaching us from the church. He himself went and uh, fasted for 40 days. He had fasted for 40 days in the desert, as you know, before he went out to do his preaching among uh, the, the people. And my beloved, we need that. We really need the fasting because there's one way only that we can cast out the certain demons. And this certain demon says the Lord himself is only cast out by prayer and fasting. So we must intensify our our fasting when we must intensify our prayers then we can get rid of the evil one that uh, is the evil one of pride that, that sets in in our heart don't look at others don't judge others this is the most important thing we have the prayer of Ephraim the city in which we said oh, Lord let me see only my own faults and not to see the faults of my brothers it is very important to understand that it's in not to look at the at at your brother. Look at the saints. Look at the saints and 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 see if you can copy their life. And don't look at your neighbors. Don't even look at your priests or or your bishops. So just keep on looking at the saints. Read the lives of saints. So listen to them. It's of utmost important. Stay away from the television. Stay away from any of the things uh, on the internet, uh, unless it is, uh, for instance, our site. St. Vladimir's, where you can listen to uh, the books, uh, spiritual books, and uh, My Life in Christ, and, and all kinds of other books and sermons. That is uh, That you can do, even during the Lent time, but don't look at other junk that the uh, this internet of today may have. Don't look to entertain yourself. Look only to, so that you can learn about yourself, so you can get into deep in your side of the heart and, and uh, really try to get rid of everything that's not pleasing to our Lord. My beloved, we have to really start to take seriously our, our life, uh, the spiritual life, because <clears throat> and that depends, our whole eternity depends on how we behave here and how we live here. But remember, to do the merciful things, as we heard yesterday. You know, in the Garden of Eden, because when the church is uh, remembering the day that out of the Garden of Eden, the Adam and, and Eve were, were thrown out. Why? For a disobedience, because they have disappeared, disobeyed the Lord. He only gave them one one rule, one, and he, they couldn't keep it. They did not keep that one rule. Why was it? Why was it like that? Well, 
because the enemy enticed them and said, well, this is the fruit from this tree will make you to be like God's yourself. You know the difference between good and evil. Well, this is a very, very terrible situation as we're so eager to know something more. And especially now, children are growing up. And when the children are teenagers, they all have to try it out and see what is this, what is this. The inquisitiveness that brings them into trouble. And so many of them are starting to lose their, lose their soul because of that. And because they have to find out what's the difference between good and evil and my beloved that's how people start to drink that's how they start to do all kinds of other things with their bodies and all kinds of all the kinds of things that is an abomination, abomination to the Lord and why? because they want to try it they, they want to try it well we have to get down to reality. The reality is that we have a terrible enemy that wants us to go against the Lord and that wants to use our body to bring us against the Lord. And he is always going to work on us as long as we live. As long as we live, he is going to try to get us, to set us against the Lord. But we have to be very fervent. We have to be uh, giving him a... Uh, uh, we can't be wishy-washy with him. We have to be very fervently telling him, get out of here, get behind the filthy scum, don't bother me. I belong to my Lord and you're not going to get me to uh, turn against him. And you have to do it. You have to do it really, just like you have to start to have, as the King David says, with utmost hatred, I hated the, the enemy of God. And he's the enemy of God. Who else? Is? And the sin is the enemy of God. And that's where we start to start to hate the sin that, that can bring us into hell. The Lord says, don't be afraid of those who can kill your body, but be afraid of those who could kill your uh, body and take you into hell. And this is sin. And this is a sin. Uh, this is sin. Uh, by this, when we sin, we give the power to the filthy scabs and they they uh, then do exactly that. They bring us into the uh, into their kingdom of the hell. And we don't want to go that direction. That's why we have now we have a chance again to fight against the enemy because that's what the, it's all about. The great land is a battle against the enemy and against our flesh to control it so that they will not control us. The soul wants to be and has to be and is alive only with the, through the help of the Lord. And we need the constant food, the grace of God to sustain our life of the soul, the eternal life. But the body wants to have the upper hand, wants to rule the soul. And we will show during this great Lent that we are not going to allow it to, to, do, uh, to do that. We are going to put the body down to it know its place and know that we all have to obey our our Lord and we have to learn to fast and to pray and so that we can conquer the evil one and chase him away and then we'll be able to truly enjoy the life here on this earth because can you imagine being free from irritation or being free from anger and and uh, being free from upsetment and uh, from uh, being offended and so on. All those feelings don't belong to Orthodox Christians. The, the Lord says, look at me, I'm meek and humble, and thou shalt find rest for your soul, for your heart. And, and this is true, this is absolutely true. Try to find that. Find, find out for yourself. Once you do find it, you don't want to go back to living and uh, being controlled by the old man. The old man has to be pushed away. The new man in Christ has to be living all the time in us and the body has to live according to the new man, not according to the old man. May our Lord help us not to commit, not to do the same mistakes over and over again. And let's, when we do, <coughs> when we do, 
fall into sin. Let us make sure that we immediately ask forgiveness. The trouble there in Adam and Eve was that they didn't ask forgiveness after they have committed this sin. They have what did actually they blamed their sin on each other. Adam blamed it on Eve, but indirectly on the Lord because it is the wife that you gave me that uh, made me to commit that sin. And she blamed the serpent. This is the serpent that the the Lord had made, obviously insinuating like that. But none of them asked forgiveness. And let's not follow that example. Let's know that for us, we must ask forgiveness all the time. You fell, you, you noticed you made a mistake, you, you committed a sin, immediately cry out to the Lord, please Lord, forgive me. Don't let me do it again. Give me the strength to stay away from this temptation and, and not to fall in, into it again. And this is how we should do it. Even if you fall down a thousand times, the Holy Father say, get up a thousand times and, and the Lord will be still willing to uh, hug you and, 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 and give you all the grace and all the help that you need. How many great, great sinners and, and fornicators and murderers and all kinds of terrible uh, sinners uh, all of a sudden were touched by the grace of God. They, they paid attention to the Lord and changed their life altogether as we, we all of us will remember the, the, the life of the Saint Mary of Egypt which is going to be reminded us during the Great Lent. My beloved, we all have a chance. We all really have a chance to become better and to clean up our act in such a way that to make our heart to be a abode of the the, the Lord with His Father and the Holy Spirit, and then then we will see the true fruits of, of, of being an Orthodox Christian and the joy, the joy of a Christianity. May our Lord give us all the strength and and keep on helping us so that we go through this road. It's not an easy road, but uh, that we will go through it and uh, asking the help from the Lord and uh, be strong soldiers and fight the evil one and our uh, old man or the flesh uh, so that we'll be able to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Amen.